Hello, in this presentation I will show a numerical example to compute the inverse kinematics of robots with spherical wrists. The aims of the presentation are to explain how to compute the inverse kinematics of a robotic arm with 6 degrees of freedom. To do this, we will solve the problem based on the kinematic decoupling, as a consequence of using a spherical wrist. The steps to follow are, on the one hand, to compute the wrist point, then to compute the angles of the first three joints and then the last three joint angles to obtain the orientation of the tool. We will also talk about, in this presentation, about different configurations uh, that the robot can adopt, all of them obtaining the same solution, which means that all of them reach the same target. The problem to be solved is to find out the positions of joints that make the end effector of the robot to be positioned and oriented with respect to the uh, robot base as indicated in a transformation matrix. This matrix corresponds to the position in which the robot gripper will be able to grip the object in its current position, I mean the, the numerical values of this matrix. In the table that I show here, uh, you can see the dynamic hardware parameters of this robot. These parameters have been obtained from the manufacturer's information on the table, as we completed following the dynamic hardware methodology that I have explained in a previous video. To compute the inverse kinematic analytically with this type of robot, we must find out the position of the wrist point. This point is obtained by subtracting the distance between the end effector point and the point where axes 4, 5 and 6 intersect. You can easily see that the position can be obtained by subtracting to the end effector position PT a quantity in the direction of the z-axis of the last link, which is based on our uh, specifications, they should be the, uh, the vector zt. Those values pt and zt can be obtained from the transformation matrix that uh, we indicated at the beginning of the presentation. pt is indeed obtained from the fourth column, while zt it is obtained from the third column of the corresponding uh, transformation matrix. This actual uh, vector is indeed the, the, the z-axis of the rotation matrix. Well, now in order to compute the value of Q1, we need to project the wrist point onto the xy plane. The r tangent of the projected coordinates provides the value of the first joint. As you can see, there are two possible solutions, one corresponding to the shoulder of the robot pointing forwards, while the other points backwards. Both of them are analytically correct and depending on one solution or the other, the numerical results will change. In particular, the distance of the projected point to the robot base, the separation distance is clearly different, as you can see. From now on, we will assume the forward solution. In order to obtain the value for the second joint, we must consider now the relative position of the wrist point with respect to the coordinate of the first link the point where the second joint rotates. In particular, we need to compute the height and separation of the right angle formed by the pwz tilde tri uh, variable, which is actually the height of the wrist point minus the height of the uh, first link, and uh, the, the, um, in this case the r uh, variable, which is the separation of the wrist point with respect to the robot base. The hypotenuse S and the angle alpha can be easily computed based on basic trigonometric rules. On the other hand, we observe that the same wrist point can be achieved uh, with two uh, possible values for Q2, which implies a configuration with the elbow up or elbow down. In both cases, there is another triangle to be solved, where our goal is to find out the angle beta of such triangle. Since now all the three sides of the triangle are known, we can use the law of cosines to compute beta angle, and depending on the solution we choose, 
for the arco cosine, then we get one of the two possible configurations. For each configuration, we can also obtain the value for the third joint Q3, again using the law of cosines. We can compute the angle gamma, in this case, with two possible values corresponding again to the elbow up and elbow down configurations. To sum up, we have four possible configurations to, to reach the same wrist point, and as a consequence of combining shoulder forwards and backwards configurations with elbow up and down configurations, we have these four possible configurations. Here I just show the numerical values that I have obtained for each of these configurations. You can check them based on the ideas that I have explained before. Now, we would like to compute the values for the last three joints. These joints can be computed by uh, or using the rotation matrix between the third and the sixth link, because this rotation depends purely on the values of these joints. As we already know, rotation R06 can be computed from rotations, from the multiplication of rotations R03 and R36. Thus, Rotation R36 can be actually marginalized out uh, as a, um, and the, the formula to, to apply is just basically the transpose of the rotation R03 multiplied with R06. Indeed, the, the rotation matrix R03 is a rotation matrix that we already know right now because we have already solved the values for the first three joints and this rotation matrix depends on these three values. You just simply need to compute the dynamic Hartman transformation matrices associated to each of the links for the corresponding joint values and get the rotational component. Also, the rotation matrix R06 is part of, of our problem statement datum and thus we can numerically compute the rotation matrix R36 as shown. These numerical values must be compared with the analytic expressions for each of these joints or the, the analytic expressions that each of these joints produce. These expressions are derived from the number hardware parameters and it is a specific, they are specific for each robot parameterization. And as a consequence, the expression I, expressions I include here are specific to the parameterization I choose in the dynamic hardware parameter Hamburg, uh, the dynamic Hartman uh, method that I showed at the beginning, and that uh, with a different parameterization some values may change, although the procedure is basically the same. We first realized that the fifth joint value can be computed from the element of the rotation matrix highlighted in orange, the one uh, corresponding to the third row and third column of the rotation matrix. On the other hand, the values for joints 4 and 6 can be obtained from the elements of the third column and row respectively painted in, in uh, red and blue. This is always possible if the sign of Q5 is different from 0, which implies that the element of the third row, third column is smaller than 1. Otherwise, we are in a singular configuration and expressions that I show here can even be simplified and the relevant elements to use would appear in the submatrix 2 times 2 with the elements that are not highlighted in this particular example. Anyway, as you can see, we have two possible configurations, also known as wrist up and wrist down. Both of them allow to reach the target position with the specified orientation and thus both of them are valid as long as the join limits are fulfilled. Here I show these two configurations and the numerical values for this, uh, each of the joints. If you take a closer look uh, to the figures, you will see that uh, the link color in magenta is actually rotated 180 degrees, which corresponds to the solution of Q4. This also implies the different uh, joints values for Q5 and Q6. Combining these two possible configurations with the previous four configurations, we can clearly see that the robot can use up to eight possible configurations to reach the same target position and orientation.
Well, in this presentation I have shown how to compute the inverse kinematic of a robot arm through an example. Thank you very much.